Hi everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today is going to be um, a different kind of video. I don't typically film like video essays and it's not going to be as beautifully edited as some of the video essays that are out there, but um, there's just been something that I have been thinking about for a very long time and I wanted to sit down and have a chat with you about it. I'm calling the title of this video the real problem with book talk, an educator's perspective. And if you're interested in what I have to say about that, then please keep watching. Okay, so I have been working on a thesis statement like in my mind for, for a while now. So this is gonna be very off the cuff, but I want you to know that I myself graduated from a four year university with an English literature degree. And I've never held a certificate or a degree in formal like secondary education, but I've worked in higher education with college students. So secondary education would mostly mean high school students. Um, but I've worked in higher education with college students. Again, not as a professor, but I've worked on the staff side as someone who was an academic advisor to students for over 10 years at two large, large universities um, across the country. So that's where my perspective is coming from. And that's why I wanted to call it like an educator's perspective. And just really throw my hat in the ring about the conversation that we have about readers, about books, and about book talk. Um, and the observations that I've had as someone who has worked with thousands of college students over the last 10 years plus. So the thesis statement that I've kind of been working on has been the real problem with book talk is that the educational systems have completely failed us. The educational system has failed us and that's the real problem with book talk. The real problem with book talk is not that girls are only reading smut. The real problem with book talk is not the overconsumption portion of it. The real problem with book talk is that the educational systems have failed us. I promise I'm going to get... <laughs> to the point and how this winds to book talk. So stick with me here. I think it affects book talk in two main ways. The first way is that the educational system, for sure in the United States, I can't speak for anywhere else in the world because my work experience has only been in the United States. The number of international students that I have worked with is not as large as the number of students that I've worked with who were residents of the United States. But most universities in this country will have something what is called a core curriculum. And a part of every core curriculum is something that every student must take at the university in order to graduate with their four-year degree. And it's going to include subjects like science, history, math, literature, writing and composition. So anywhere you go that's like a four-year school and most two-year schools will have some form of this type of like core curriculum basics requirement. The number of students that I worked with, again this is all anecdotal, there's like no legitimate research that I have to present to you, but the number of students that I worked with that absolutely dreaded their literature requirement was it was unreal, like dread, real dread. And I'm talking about they would rather take an AP test, take community college credits, test out of, some institutions have other ways to test out of these literature requirements than to sit down in a classroom and take a literature class for a whole semester. And I believe <clears throat> this dread comes from the last 20 years of public education and some of the educational reforms that have happened where we are only teaching to standardize tests. That is something that has come huge in the United States. Um, it was there when I was in high school, but I don't know, I feel like I had a lot more freedom and electives to choose from when I was in high school that fostered students' individual interests. And I think that somewhere along the way, we have lost track of that because we are trying to meet certain standards set forth by state 
governing bodies, federal governing bodies, and the love for reading and the ability to read critically is gone um, because these teachers have been strong-armed into trying to teach what is going to be on whatever this test is. I had a lot of conversations with students that all said the same thing. When I asked them about some of their experiences in high school, like what kind of topics did you cover? Most of the time they couldn't tell me because they're like, our teacher just taught to the test. Now I'm currently in the state of Texas. I've also worked in education in the state of Minnesota, two very different approaches to education in both of those states. And I would still see the same kinds of answers um, given to me. And these are like 18, 19, 20 year old students that should, should have the ability to pick up a text, read it, draw some type of hypothesis, thesis about what they have read, and then translate their thoughts onto paper. They should. But the current model of education is not teaching them that. And it is not teaching them how to read critically. And it, it frightens them. It frightens them. I used to work for... Um, a natural sciences school where a lot of the students that I worked with were pre-med um, or pre-health sciences. And that meant that they would have to take additional testing to get into some type of graduate program, whether that be medical school, pharmacy school, nursing school, whatever. I would always warn my pre-med students that have you taken your literature requirement yet? Most of the time they would say no, because these are, you know, scientifically gifted kids. They really enjoy the sciences. That's why they're in the majors that they're in. Um, and I'd say, well, I would really like for you to hold off on your literature requirement until you get closer to when you take the MCAT. Because the writing portion has been, in my experience, none of this has, I, again, I don't have sources to cite, but this has just been my experience working with students that the writing portion of the MCAT tends to be what trips them up the most. And then they end up bombing that portion of the test. And that could be the difference between getting into the medical school of your dreams or not. And a lot of people were like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But then I had further conversations where I actually toured medical schools um, on behalf of students and trying to gather information. And the medical schools all said the same thing, where they're like, these students are coming in here and they don't know how to write. They don't know how to read. And we need you to tell them that we need them to get it together. So, you know, that, that really informed some of my decision making when I was working with students. Um, and helping them figure out the paths that they would go on. But I did have a lot of students who would come up to me after they took the MCAT. The ones that had a tough time on the writing tended to score lower than they were hoping for, which is a shame because it shouldn't have gotten to that point where they are 21 years old and cannot articulate what they're thinking from and, and extracting from what they have read and being able to articulate it onto a text. Now, I've also worked with students who were business students. And so a lot of these students, if they weren't interested in going into business, a lot of them were thinking pre-law. I have a few family members who went to law school and who are currently lawyers. And I tell them, I told my students all the same thing. I was like, well, year one of law school is all writing and we're gonna have to get you comfy with reading and writing and extrapolating from texts again. And that was like the most scary thing that these students heard me say in their like trajectory of their degree plan. It wasn't the fact that they had to take the LSATs. It wasn't the fact that they had to apply to law school. It was the fact that they had to learn how to read and write again. So I'm just kind of bringing this, all of this around that our educational system has not taught people how to critically read and extrapolate their thoughts and what they've gathered from the text and, and they're not able to articulate their thoughts in writing. And those are two big skills that I feel like we're missing out on. Now, how does this relate to book talk and like, why should we even care? Well, I'm of the personal belief that let the girlies read, let people read what they want to read. Um, because if they're only 
taught to read things, to score well on an exam, that's not developing readers. That's not how I learned how to read for enjoyment. And I feel like TikTok is currently the platform where we're sharing our love and our enjoyment of reading. So by not teaching students how to read and write critically, we have also somehow developed this attitude that you are not a reader unless you can read and write critically. So therefore, all the people who are enjoying book talk and reading smut and reading romanticy, which I read both of those things as well, they're not real readers. Like them plowing through 300 books a year because all they read is romance, that's not real reading. But who's, it, it's this like imaginary literary elite out there that have said those books aren't good enough but the schools aren't teaching those books anyway for people to get their hands on and enjoy. It's, it's a double-edged sword. We could also, you know, throw in the ring that anytime young women have loved something, everybody wants to bring it down. And it's a cycle that has repeated itself over and over and over again. And in literature, it's well-documented. Um, but even in my lifetime, Twilight was a big moment when I was in college and I was in a sorority. There were literal factions in my sorority house of people who were team Edward and team Jacob. And we were well educated, you know, women. But any time, but anything that we enjoy and we come together in this collective excitement to have a giggle and a laugh over Edward and Jacob, it's not real reading and it's not good enough. I think that stems from the literary elite as well. That like this imaginary literary elite that we've all subscribed to tells us that book talk reading isn't real and young women who enjoy things can't enjoy things. <laughs> so that's my next problem with the, how the education system has failed us. It's less curriculum based, but more, you know, we've got to check our internal biases based. For some reason, the permeating thought in our brains that has been driven into us from school is that the only texts that matter are the ones that are written by people who have gotten a degree in creative writing and have a huge plethora of a writing portfolio before they even submit their first draft. And therefore, all of the reading that we've ever done from these indie authors, these Kindle Unlimited romanticy books, all the girlies are having fun with this, none of that counts. And we have a big stink about it, about people not reading the right things. And book talk is just a plague. If the only way to become a well-respected author is to have a degree in creative writing, I'm sad to say that no one in the United States is gonna get very far with that dream. Do you know that you can get degrees in creative writing, but do you know how hard it is to get into those programs? Um, they're very, very small, very, very niche, and you have to have a portfolio of written works to even apply to get into the program. So you see barriers are already being built, built and therefore people who get in are an accepted part of the club and the people who cannot get in are not part of our accepted club and there, there comes our divide. And who created that? School systems. <laughs> the educational systems put all, the, all these imaginary constructs on there. So I, was, I have an English major. I could only take one creative writing class that would fit with my degree because I, I was spending most of my time reading surveys of British literature and American literature and all these different authors. And I could take more creative writing classes if I wanted to, but they were only introductory. You could only take introductory to creative writing, introduction to fiction, introduction to poetry. I think introduction to playwriting, maybe. But if you wanted to take any of the advanced courses, you had to apply and those spots were very limited. And so what happens 
if you have students who are brought up in an educational system that is only teaching to the test, but then is also stripping away different um, extracurriculars or different courses that would allow them the ability to explore their creative writing. When I was in high school, I had notebooks and notebooks and notebooks of creative writing. And I'm pretty sure that there are plenty of people out there who can say the same. But somewhere along the way, if someone told you whatever you're scribbling in your notebook is not good enough because it's not a finished work and you need to submit this in order to be considered a serious writer. The only thing that you need to be to become a writer is to start writing <laughs> and to write every day and to get your and to get your practice in. That's all you have to do, but somewhere we have told ourselves that writers are not good enough if they're just going straight to the indie route and those are all the books that all the book talk girlies are talking about. They're not reading the real stuff, um, which I think is horseshit. <laughs> so in summary, I guess of everything that I've said is that's horseshit. Yeah, totally. This is why I've been thinking about it for a while. I just see all these people being like, the problem with book talk is that these girls can't read critically. These girls aren't doing this, this and this and this. And then there was that one clip that went pretty viral about the one young woman. I'm sure you've seen it if you are a part of book talk. I saw the video of the young woman who was reading Six of Crows written by Leigh Bardugo, one of my favorite books. But she was like, why are there so many words on the page? And then you see like all these people who are saying, if there's no dialogue, I don't wanna read it. I'm only gonna read the dialogue. So my reaction to that was twofold. One, it was what I had already explained to you that people aren't taught to read critically anymore. So if you're only thinking that you're gonna get the plot from dialogue, you're sorely mistaken. Okay, so there's one of those. But the other part of me was the empathetic fantasy reader that I was like, well, that magic system isn't really explained very well and you would have had to read the trilogy before that. And if you're not into that, it's kind of hard to jump into it, but I promise the story gets good. So there was my two warning brains, um, which is why I want to approach this topic from my educator side and not my like reader side. From a personal standpoint, my thoughts on book talk or let the girlies read, let people read and enjoy what they want to read. However they consume it is a valuable form of reading, whether it's through a physical book, because I'm too old for this shit. We don't need to go through audiobooks aren't real reading. We've had that argument for years and yes, it is real reading. Any form of reading that makes the text make sense to you is valid. So that's, that's what we should be promoting. And if smut gets you there, then it gets you there. If romanticy gets you there, then it gets you there. I don't see the big deal. To me, personally, book talk isn't a problem at all. It's the educational system. All right, thank you so much. Let me know what you think about this video essay. Um, let me know your thoughts and your opinions down below. I'd really love to know what you think about it from this type of perspective. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much. Please put a stack of books emoji in the comment section if you have nothing else to comment. And then, um, yeah, all my social media links are listed down below. My small business links are listed down below. And you know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.